There's a little screw in the end here, which allows us to adjust the frame so it sits really tightly up against the other side of the box and makes sure the observation window at the other end stays in line. So there's a cap that comes out at the top, that's where the tool goes in, and there's one at the bottom that comes out, and this is where the tube goes in. So I've just got a short tube here, just for the purpose of demonstrating and getting the honey to our jar. So you see two slots here. Now the bottom one's used to open the cells and harvest the honey. You can use one tool or two. I'm going to use two here because they'll work against each other and won't tip the frame over. So all I have to do is move these down like so. And what's happened is inside the honeycomb, the cells have split and turned into channels for the honey to flow down and out of the hive. So let's have a look at that. If I grab, uh, I look down the honey tube. Look at that, isn't that absolutely gorgeous? That beautiful honey just draining down. So you can see that quite quickly draining out of the frame. Look at that honey just pouring out, that beautiful fresh honey. So you notice it's pretty much free from wax, it just comes out pure and clean, there's no filtering needed. So you can see here the dark area, that's where the honey's still draining down, where it's light the honey's actually all drained out already. So here you can see the capping hasn't actually change. The bees are standing on top of this and the honey just drains out from beneath their feet. The capping has, hasn't really been disturbed at all. Over here you can see how the channels are formed inside the comb. They haven't capped it. We get a really good look at that. See those zigzagging channels that guide the honey down and out of the hive. It's been about 10 minutes and we've got that much honey already. About 1.5 kilograms. Mm. So we continually get the feedback from beekeepers that it tastes like comb honey. It tastes like when you chew on fresh honeycomb. And we think it's because the honeys aren't mixed up. They're not mixed with all the other frames in the hive. And the honey hasn't been spun through the air in the centrifuge and exposed to all that oxygen. Apparently honey loses some of its floral flavours from oxidisation. So it's been 20 minutes and now I've got that much honey. And you can see it slowing down here. If you look down the tube now. You can see the honey's drained out of this end frame view now. A little bit still there, draining down at the end. So here you can see how the capping hasn't changed at all. The bees could be standing on top of this comb surface and hardly ever notice anything going on. Whereas where they haven't drawn the honeycomb cells out as far, you can see there is a little bit of disturbance there. So we initially thought we would have to coat the whole honeycomb matrix in wax in order to get the bees to like it. But we didn't have to at all. You can put this straight in, no wax coating, and the bees take to it and build all this beautiful honeycomb on it. In fact, we've tested using traditional wax frames and these side by side in a box, and they'll build on these and the flow frames at the same time. 
It's really quite amazing. So it doesn't have to be either or. You can have flow frames in the middle of your box and then a couple of traditional wax ones either side. You can have the best of both worlds. You can have a whole other box of traditional frames or another box of flow frames. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You can see how all that honey's drained out now and the comb's going quite light. Still a few drips dripping from the ceiling. Gorgeous. So you don't need to leave these tools in the whole time. Once you've opened the frame, you can take them out and move on to the next one.